With the COVID-19 vaccine likely more than a year away, an influx of requests came in to explain what other options we have to fight the novel coronavirus. Today is April 1st, 2020, and we'll be talking about antiviral treatments. In order to understand how antivirals will help with COVID-19, we must first understand how they affect your body. Antiviral medications require a fine balance between efficacy, or how well they work, toxicity, and viral resistance towards the drug. But unlike most antibacterial medications, which work to directly kill the bacteria, antiviral drugs don't necessarily try and kill or destroy the virus. Instead, they affect your own cell's machinery in a variety of ways in order to minimize the virus's ability to replicate or develop. And they can assist your body in building an immune response as well. In order to see this in action, let's Let's look at the antiviral drug ribavirin, which is used as a treatment for the small, enveloped RNA virus hepatitis C. Once consumed, ribavirin has four main effects. Outside of the cell, ribavirin can increase something called Th2 cells, which increase protective immune responses. Inside the cell, it's converted to ribavirin monophosphate, or RMP, which depletes GTP, a molecule used for energy. As GTP depletes, there is less energy available for the virus to use. RMP then continues to be phosphorylated twice, becoming ribavirin triphosphate, or RTP. And this is an important step because it directly inhibits the viral RNA polymerase, an enzyme that helps replicate the viral RNA. In fact, many antivirals use this process because if you can inhibit viral RNA polymerase, you can stop its main mechanism to replicate itself. Finally, RTP can act as a lethal mutagen towards the viruses, ultimately making them defective. Now, ribavirin is only one type of treatment considered for hepatitis C and is used based upon symptoms, previous disease, or organ issues. It can actually lead to hemolytic anemia in around 10% of patients and cause other side effects like upper respiratory issues. In fact, when it comes to fighting a virus, there's often a mix of multiple treatments like antivirals that are chosen based on the circumstance. Showing you how this drug works is to highlight the biological complexity of these drugs. They work on many parts of the cell and some work better or worse depending on symptoms or current physiological states. Sadly, there's no such thing as a miracle cure or a fix-all drug that goes in and just shoots the virus. There will always be nuances and trade-offs with which antivirals will work. So where are we at now in 2020? Where are we at with these antivirals that we can use to help with the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2? You may have heard about the famous drug hydroxychloroquine because she got mad headlines when Donald Trump tweeted about COVID-19 saying hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin taken together have a real chance of being the biggest game changers in the history of medicine. He likely tweeted this based on a study from France of 36 coronavirus patients, of which 20 were treated with hydroxychloroquine and some with the separate antibiotic. It did work as a treatment for some patients, but sadly others were admitted to the ICU and some did die. As well, another study from China found hydroxychloroquine had no effect at all, with another finding that it had decreased fever in some. Because research is happening right now at record speeds, we are already starting clinical trials on chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. And in about four to six weeks, we will get these initial results, finding out if it's doing something, maybe it's doing nothing, maybe it's actually causing damage in people who are symptomatic of coronavirus. Trump spoke way too early about this drug, and sadly, a couple actually having seen that chloroquine was being chatted about on TV, consumed fish tank cleaner because it had chloroquine in it, and this dose was too high and one of them actually died. This is why it is important to remember that when talking about medication, you should always be listening to medical professionals first. As you saw with ribavirin earlier, these antiviral medications are complicated. They're biologically sophisticated things. And so it will take a while before a professional can look at the results and decide if in fact chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine is a game changer. Will it be our best option? Possibly. Will it have to be mixed with other drugs? Also possible. And could it do nothing or even do more harm? We'll have to wait and see. Research during a pandemic happens fast and with small sample sizes. So one thing to always note 
is that any over-the-top claims of miracle drugs should be questioned until prolonged testing can occur. To end on some good news, an early study in petri dishes found that chloroquine may help protect cells from the coronavirus by decreasing the pH of a cell when it is trying to fight the virus, slowing down the replication cycle of the virus. But again, more to come on that. Another antiviral drug being talked about right now is remdesivir. Remdesivir inhibits viral mRNA polymerase, which as stated earlier, is the enzyme that synthesizes the RNA genome, an essential part of the virus's replication system. Remdesivir has been clinically tested for Ebola, but scientists have discovered that it has a broad spectrum of antiviral activities. Remdesivir clinical trials have already begun and will be waiting anxiously over the next few months for the first wave of results. The WHO has a four-arm clinical trial looking at remdesivir against an HIV drug combination, against another HIV drug combination with the antiviral interferon, against chloroquine. The reason we can move right into clinical trials with these drugs is because they've already gone through rigorous testing in the past. For example, during the Ebola outbreak, remdesivir went through preclinical trials in petri dishes, testing on mice, rhesus macaque monkeys, before large-scale clinical trials in which all studies showed antiviral effects. There are predicted to be 29 genes slash proteins associated with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, so scientists are cross-referencing these genes and proteins with other drugs on the market to see if these other drugs might be able to help. It's important that we continue all of this research because the best therapies may actually end up being a cocktail of drugs. And if the virus mutates, the more knowledge, concepts, and drugs we have at our disposal, the better. It usually takes around six years of research to administer a new antiviral drug for the general public to consume. So things right now are happening fast. Four to six weeks is when we will see if these original clinical trials of antivirals are continuing to be promising. But in the meantime, we all need to be, say it with me, staying at home. Read about Look, learn a language, bake. I literally have burn on my arm because I've been baking so much. Become an influencer because you might have guessed it. It's easy. Stay at home because we need to flatten the curve in order to give time for the researchers to figure out these antiviral medications, figure out a vaccine. And we also need to be helping the medical professionals and the frontline workers, giving them time to look after the sick properly. At this moment, we fear that healthcare workers are running out of personal protective equipment. So the least that we can do is stay in our dang houses. Again, if we do not stay home, if we do not physically isolate, we're not only putting our own lives at risk, we're putting other people's lives at risk risk, including these frontline healthcare professionals. Also my beautiful, intelligent, and amazing, at this moment, heroic sister is a frontline worker. She's actually a respiratory therapist, which means that she runs ventilators in an ICU. So you bet that I'm staying in this fricking house for her. One thing to be optimistic about right now is how scientists, researchers, and healthcare workers are coming together by sharing research and information. Epidemiologists, statisticians, nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, blood transfusion experts, which is a fascinating other treatment we're working on explaining in another video, are all using the internet to share results, making a strong case for open access scientific information. Borders are falling and we're seeing research and the sharing of information happening at record speeds. As for antivirals ending COVID-19, we have to stay at home and allow time for scientists, researchers, and physicians to figure out the best antiviral treatments to treat us. I know right now, sadly, it feels like we're sitting at home waiting and it, in many ways we are playing catch up. And one of the main reasons for this that we need to focus on is because there's been a lack of funding for scientists and scientific research across the globe. As science communicators, we continually see research, scientific research slashed and scientists ignored. And this is incredibly frustrating to reflect on right now during a pandemic when we're all sitting at home waiting for science to fix this world issue. Last year, Donald Trump planned to cut funding for the National Institute of Health. This is the third year in a row that he planned to do this. Can we not just start voting for politicians who believe in science? So we'll say it now, and we'll say it again, and that's that we need to vote for science. We need to be electing politicians who understand, believe in science, and who are willing to listen to scientists when it comes to policy. 
at all times, not just during a frickin' pandemic. It's so important that we get this medication right because any hiccups could strain the public's trust in the government. And studies from Hong Kong found that your ability to stay at home and quarantine effectively directly correlated with your trust in the government. This antiviral research will be extremely helpful. Right now, also though, we need to increase the tracking and the tracing of the virus, something that America and the UK and Canada is falling behind on. We need to figure out how we can test more. If you wanna hear us talk more in depth about these antiviral treatments and all the conversations surrounding COVID-19, our latest podcast, Side Note, actually addresses it. We'll link it over here and in the description for you to watch and listen to. And thank you for giving us lots of questions and lots of ideas for videos. We are definitely thinking uh, about answering more of them in the coming few weeks. And yeah, in the meantime, stay at home, physically isolate, and we will see you next week for a new science video. See you later. Yes.